Hi, my name is Dai Shizuka. Uh, I was the lead author on the Kut study that was highlighted in this module. Um, this study was conducted as part of my PhD dissertation, um, working with Dr. Bruce Lyon at UC Santa Cruz. Um, and, and it was really a part of a, a larger project focusing on various aspects of parental care and the evolution of interactions between parents and offspring. We, we focused on coots because, uh, because they have this very dramatic um, phase in their life history in early parental care where um, a lot of chicks um, die of starvation. Uh, parents uh, tend to favor certain chicks over others. And so uh, a big part of the project focused on that. Um, and, and we also knew that there was this interesting brood parasite story going on. But that wasn't our initial focus. Uh, our, our focus started to shift towards this question uh, about brood parasitism and whether parents could recognize uh, their own chicks versus parasitic chicks uh, through some combination of anecdotal observations and, and some failed experiments. So we knew from past studies that coots practice conspecific brood parasitism, laying eggs in each other's nests. Uh, but we didn't really think that uh, coots would be able to tell apart their own chicks from parasite chicks because, um, you know, hosts of cuckoos and cowbirds and special other specialist brood parasites don't seem to be able to do this. Um, now there are several cases where we know uh, that they can, but but at the time. Uh, we really didn't, didn't know uh, of, of any hosts really that could tell uh, their own chicks from parasitic chicks. But as we were observing these coots, uh, a couple of things uh, started to uh, pop out. One was uh, we had our first definitive you know, observation of infanticide um, during the early phase of this research. So. Uh, a couple of us actually were watching uh, the same brood of, of, of uh, coots, and the parents started to essentially kill off uh, one of the chicks. They, they, they were very aggressive, they were trying to, to drown the chick, uh, and we thought that was really uh, interesting, but we knew coots were aggressive to chicks sometimes, so uh, we didn't think about it that hard, actually. Um, but since all of these chicks were tagged uh, with different color uh, tags, we, could, we knew exactly which, which chick that was. It wasn't until the end of the field season, though, uh, that I got around to looking up who that chick was, and it turned out to be a parasitic chick in that group. So that was uh, one of the first clues. Um, there was another interesting case where <coughs> uh, a pair of coots adopted, or, or appeared to adopt, uh, three of their neighbor's chicks. Um, so, if, so three chicks in a neighboring territory swam over uh, to this pair's territory, and the pair started to care for them as if they were their own. And again, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know who those chicks were at the time, but at, at the end of the field season, as, as I was going through the records, I realized that uh, the female in, in this this uh, focal pair had actually laid four parasitic eggs in their neighbor's nest, and, and one of them died, and three of the chicks actually just came back to uh, their biological parents, um, perhaps because they were being rejected at, at their foster uh, parents' territory, and their biological parents happened to be next door neighbors. So. Um, so those were, were really interesting cases that, that um, suggested to us that there was a possibility that coots could recognize their own offspring. What we first set out to do, actually, is to conduct, conduct um, what I call mixed brood, uh, mixed brood experiment, the first iteration of which uh, we just dumped chicks from 
different nests into the same nest, uh, chicks that hatched on the same day, put them together in, in the same nest. And, and the idea was that if uh, hosts could tell apart their own chicks from parasites, they would favor the chicks, uh, their biological offspring, and reject uh, the other chicks. Uh, we could not find any evidence that uh, coots could tell the difference, that the coots would favor their own chicks over parasitic chicks. And that ran counter to these anecdotal observations um, that we were seeing where, where we actually saw uh, coots, for example, rejecting parasitic chicks. So, so we didn't give up then, and uh, we, we just made us think harder about perhaps what kind of uh, cues they might be using to, to differentiate between their own chicks and someone else's chicks. And so around the time we were thinking very hard about this, uh, we had another anecdotal observation um, where in a, a, a pair of coots that we were monitoring started to feed the neighbor's chicks as if they were their own. So there's kind of another case of, of, of mistaken adoption. Um, in this case, they started to feed their, feed their neighbor's chicks for a couple of days before their own eggs started to hatch. And once their own eggs started to hatch, they started to reject their own chicks. They started to kill, kill them off. Eventually, they killed off all of their own chicks, actually, and, and left the territory. And so that, um, that anecdote inspired the, the hypothesis that we ended up testing, which is that perhaps um, the order in which they're exposed to chicks matter. So maybe in this case, uh, they mistakenly adopted their neighbor's chicks, thought that those were the first chicks that hatched their own. And then the subsequent chicks that, ha that actually hatched at their nest, uh, they considered parasites, right? Because they looked different than the first chicks they started to feed. And so that's how we came up with the study design to directly test that idea that the, uh, the type of chicks they're exposed to on the first day of hatching really matters. And that's what we The last thing I wanted to highlight um, is, is the fact that this whole research uh, really hinged on the participation of undergraduate researchers. We really, really could not have done uh, this work without the assistance of undergrad uh, assistants. So uh, every year we would take about three to four undergraduates uh, up to the field site with us uh, for three months. Uh, they participated in almost every phase of research from packing the car to driving to the field site, setting up a camp at a, at a cabin that we rent. Uh, we would cook together um, and, uh, and of course go out and collect data, um, everything from finding nests to monitoring nests, uh, marking and keeping track of eggs, hatching them, uh, measuring chicks, and then returning the chicks observations, all of it, uh, undergraduates uh, were heavily involved. And what, what was particularly important for us was um, with, were conversations that we would have, often over dinner or on car rides, about what we saw out there, um, and kind of cool things they saw, not necessarily just about coots, but, but anything, any natural history uh, we really enjoyed talking about. But um, the end result is that you know, as we're, we're talking about these interesting observations, it starts, you know, it deepens our understanding of the natural history. And that was really key to, um, to designing uh, this study. So, so all of these ideas about hatching patterns and anecdotal observations Know, only one or two people might have actually seen it, but they tell others, and now it opens our eyes to other possibilities, uh, and that leads to, to more interesting observations. And so, and so, that's another way in which the undergraduate assistants were really, really important. They not only just collected the data, but they were really critical in designing um, the study. So, 
So for those of you um, undergrads out there who are interested in research, I'd say participating in, in the ongoing research uh, is really, really important. I particularly think field experience, uh, experience is, is a really powerful way to learn about science because um, there's a lot of things that don't go smoothly, a lot of challenges that you have to overcome, a lot of creativity in how you collect data or design experiments. I think those are really um, important aspects of science that you don't necessarily learn in the classroom. So, uh, so go out there and, and participate in research.